Hello and welcome. You're crafting today with Heather Thomas. I'm the Songbird Stamper and I've got um, I've got a little project to share with you today. So this is the January to June mini catalogue and I'm going to be working a little bit with the Gilding Flakes. Absolutely gorgeous new product. Um, I probably should have found out where they are in the catalogue first but uh, we've also got the Sand and Sea Suite that I'll be showcasing for you. This one here is Friends Are Like Seashells stamp set. And they come with the most gorgeous die set as well. So we're going to have a play with that one. Working in some different colourways. This is the colourway in the catalogue. And uh, we're going to be working with crumb cake and gold today. If you ever can't find anything in the catalogue, all you've got to do is come to the back, certainly in the January to June mini catalogue, and you'll find it here. Gilded leafing embellishment on page 33. So it's £8.25. And it's the most stunning flakes of gold here it doesn't do it justice let me bring it in you, it comes in this little pot and i'm going to show you how to work with it a little bit easier now, this is a bit of a teaser today because uh, i've got a class coming up on gilding flakes um so throughout february i'll be showcasing a few bits and bobs but i wanted to introduce you to them really so i've got a, a box here um, with a lid that i have emptied mine into they've had a lot of use but there's still loads and loads in there. I'll take the lid off, but don't don't breathe. So all hold your breath. Isn't that gorgeous? Stunning. And I found it much easier working with it in the box there. So I'll put the lid back on until we're ready to go. These are the cards I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to, to make this one. I've gone with a crumb cake and gold. I've used loads of different techniques here with the gilding flakes. Um, again, this is going to be coming up throughout February, but this is with the heat and stick powder. Um, we've got a little bit of um, Tombow glue. I've, uh, I've used it onto gold foil as well. Look, I've forgotten to put a gem on this one. Um, but this is the one that I'm going to show you today with this, this uh, adhesive sheets. It's a permanent adhesive sheeting. So what i've got is a piece of whisper white cardstock and that is four inches by five and three quarter inches so or 14 and a half by 10 and a half now when you get your sheet of adhesive sheets i've just trimmed it come they come like this six by 12 i think i've um, just trimmed this down to the size that i want it and you can see this little label it says peel here so all you need to do is peel that back really really gently because you don't want to lose any of your adhesive sheeting but the bit that you're going to peel off this top bit has no stickiness on it but the bottom bit does so be careful with the bottom bit just lay that down this bit then can go in the bin and this is like a one side it's not double sided it's a one sided sticky so all i'm going to do is lay that there and then line this up and lay it down I'm going to try and get it as accurate as possible. Okay. And then that's our bit that we're going to run through the die cut. So you can still tell which side is which. This is the whisper white side. And this bit's the side with all the sticky on it. I'm going to bring in the dies. These are the seaside seashells dies. And you've got this gorgeous piece here. And then you've got this one that cuts out the sand dollar. This one cuts out this one. This one cuts out the greenery. This one cuts out the starfish. And this one cuts out this other piece of greenery here. I'm not going to use any of those today. We're just going to work with this one big die. So I'm going to lay that down on top of my sticky side sheet. Don't lay it down on top of the whisper white. Lay it down on top of the, the sticky side. Okay, and we're going to run that through the new cut and emboss machine. So I'm just going to lay that down so that it's on the whole sheet. Make sure none of the edges overlap. Oh, pop that to one side. And then you can peel off. I love the fact that Stampin' Up! dies just cut like butter. 
straight through. The rest can go in the bin. We'll pop all of this to one side and then just peel away and poke, poke out any of the smaller bits here that you uh, don't want. I probably should get my pokey tool out. From my magic drawer. This is the take your pick tool. I love the fact that all my tools are in one place with this little gadget. Poke out all these excess bits. So I've not made this. You could have put sticky sheeting on both sides and then you could have laid that straight down. But I haven't. I've only put it on one side. And I'm going to bring in my mats and layers. I've got a piece of very vanilla cardstock. That's measuring 21 by 14 and a half. A piece of gold foil at 14 by 10. And then a piece of crumb cake, 13 and a half by 9 and a half. I'm just going to work with the crumb cake for now. And I need to stick this on here. And it is going to overlap slightly. That's not a problem. The only thing that you really don't want is glue lodging out underneath. So try and make sure that you glue all over. You need these little bits as well. You can take your time over this. I might end up with a few splodges because I'm trying to do it fairly quickly. But you want it well stuck down, but no glue splodging out. hope you can see okay it's really gray here today it's been gray for a while roll on spring hey unless you're watching in this in the spring and then hopefully it will be nice but yeah it's a bit rainy a bit miserable perfect day for sitting inside and working with some gold leafing embellishment all the products that you see today can be bought through myself on an independent stampin up demonstrator head to my website here www.thesongwearstamper.co.uk and you can purchase any of the products that you see me use during my demonstrations. All I'm going to do then is lay that down onto my crumb cake card base and just wait a sec for that to stick down. And again, if you like what you see today, please don't forget to hit subscribe. I'd absolutely love for you to see all my other videos. And uh, I'll say well, I've got a few more bits coming up with this series later in February as well. So once that has stuck down we can then go ahead and peel off this side. So we've already peeled off one side earlier and all I'm going to do is start here and just peel off this and it's going to leave us this really sticky. So you probably again you probably want to wait a little bit longer. I'm just trying to make this video not take half an hour. So I'm just peeling that off maybe a little bit quicker than could otherwise have got away with. And that is now all sticky. So a lot of people I think ask what's the difference between the gold uh, leafing embellishment and gilding and um, heat embossing powder. You can just do so much more with this. There's no way you could do this technique. Um, well there is but it would and it just wouldn't look the same at all. You get this really rustic effect with the gilded leafing and you can do so much more I think than you can with the embossing powder. So you, what you could do if you wanted to is start taking these out and placing them on. Okay, As soon as you stick it on it sticks down. I'm going to do this one of my favourite ways and that is literally just to tip it upside down and place it in the box. Just be careful you don't drop it in otherwise all the flakes will puff out but just pop that down in there, give it a bit of a press and then Pick it up and I've got a stamping sponge to work with so it's just one of these sponges uh, um, isn't it gorgeous though look at that it's stunning and all I'm going to do is start gently rubbing okay you want to be gentle for two reasons one because our um, die cut actually sticks out over the edge of this this sheet of paper here intentionally um, but you also want to be careful because you don't want to um, rip the gilding flakes away and you want to try and get them off in big chunks if you can do so you're not left with dust laying around afterwards. Now you'll have to go over this a couple of times. For the first pass, all we're trying to do is get off most of that gilding flakes. Just trying to brush off most of the excess back into the tub. 
and then we can see what we're working with a little bit easier it's a bit hard at first isn't it you've got all this stuff everywhere on your piece it's a bit hard to see what's what and to see what you're working with so this is why this is so much easier to do in a big tub than it is in the little tub that they come in even if you've just got like an ice cream container or something like that it would be really great to decant them you don't have to decant them all you could just decant some i just went the whole hog and chucked them all in there and then i'm just going back over and refining can you see it oh it's gorgeous isn't it and you can now you can rub a little bit harder if you can see where your delicate bits are brush that a little bit harder make sure you get into all the gaps into all the joins so that you're left just with this really neat gilded effect again you could take your time a little bit more than I have there but I don't want this demonstration to take forever one last thing I tend to do try and get all the excess off my fingers back everything back into the tub again we don't want to waste anything do we and then I just use my um, trousers if you had like a chamois not a simple chamois not the purple one that's wet um, if you had a clean like a microfiber cloth something like that or one of the new blending brushes like this I might try the yellow one actually because that probably wouldn't leave much of a mark but yeah mine mine all got a bit dirty but you can just go over it with a blending brush and it gives it's like sandpaper i described it to somebody uh, you go over with your rough sandpaper first and then you kind of go in with your smooth just to get a bit more of a refined effect and it helps to buff it up as well makes it all nice and shiny absolutely stinking gorgeous so that is our background created i'm not going to create the whole card with you today i'm just going to show you the, the techniques that i've done and then explain so this is the card that we're making um i've then used the same die again to cut out these stamped images so i'm going to show you how to, to do that now pop all that to one side i've got a piece of um, very vanilla cardstock and i've got my stamparatus i don't use this too much probably not as much as i should do um, but it is a really, really useful tool. The only thing I will say is make sure when you're working with photopolymer stamps and gilding flakes that you don't let them interact. Otherwise, you'll have gilding flakes on your stamps forever. So pop your piece of um, cardstock in here. I've already lined these up. So let me show you how I did that. If I can find the die. So here's the die. And you kind of go, well, where do I stamp? Where do I put my stamps in here? So all I've done is laid this down on my piece of card. I don't even know if I want to take it off. Yeah, I'm going to have to show you, aren't I? Take all the stamps off. Lay your die cut down on the piece of card so that I've done it so that it's right into the corner here, but just so that all of your stamped images are on the card. And then you literally play puzzle pieces. Oh, don't throw it on the floor. It's all dirty. You play puzzle pieces. So with your, your die butted up into the corner, so if it slips, you know where to put it again. And you just slot this in so it doesn't move and they fit in beautifully like one of those floor puzzles that the kids have and that's it then bring that down so this is a photopolymer stamp set. That's why I've got the <laughs> die stuck to it. Just peel your die away. That's why I've got this foam matting here because it's a photopolymer stamp set. I've got crumb cake ink. Ink those up and then stamp them down. Beauty of the stamp process, if, if I was to misstamp this and make a bit of a mistake, it wouldn't matter because I can just stamp it again. But as it is, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that one. So we can pop that to one side. Then lay this back over. It's easier to do this on the table than it is on your machine. 
line it up a little bit of sticky tape post-it note tape if you're if you're happy that you know what you're doing and you don't need to use that that's fine but I'm just going to pop that through the machine again just need to get rid of these little bits off here so two seconds in the cutting emboss machine. Oh, I'm missing a when it goes through way too easily, you know you're missing a shim. Pop that through there. Even though they've got numbers on, I still get it wrong sometimes. So I've got my cutting plates are two uh, three, this one is two and then this one is a number one look so you can see that you've got everything. So that's our die, all nicely cut. I've seen loads of beautiful things, and I've really, I've really enjoyed working with this die. Um, you can emboss this as well. There's an embossed. Should I show you that? Yeah, go on, let me show you. We can have one embossed as well if I can find it. There it is. It lines up with this let's bring this back in can you see this so it's got the shell so it's got all the shapes and patterns that match up this exactly all you need to do is line up can you see here I'm just going to line up these bits there and the same at the bottom make sure that's all lined up neatly close that down how you know it's the front of an embossing folder the logo is bright it's just, and it's got this on the back so that's the front that's the side that's going to be up all I need here is my number one plate and my grey embossing folder plate with those three got a bit of a bonus here I wasn't planning on doing this yet, but it's just so effective It'd be crazy not to and I hope you can see this embossed, I don't know if you can, you can see it better on the back. And so you've got all this raised texture. All I did then was cut them out around the lines and stick them on top of the shapes here. Can you see that? So I've literally cut it out with a pair of scissors, fussy cut that out. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me doing all that, but I've cut them out, stuck them on, and then I've got a little bit of a banner, a piece of ribbon, gorgeous uh, sentiment there from the Happy Thoughts stamp set, which fits beautifully inside the punch that I've used. That's the stamp set, it's stunning, isn't it? And uh, a little star there. So I hope you like my project. Like I say, if there's anything you see there that you're not sure of, please do drop me a line, pop a comment below. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and the follow. You'll always be notified of any future videos. And if you would like to place an order this month, here's my host code. Any orders over £25 will be getting a free card and a thank you gift from me to say thank you very much for shopping with me. And that will be coming out to you guys in February. And there's my website. Head on over and stay tuned for more crafty videos. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye bye.